Hey what's up guys, this is Fatal Cubes, and in the last video we created the GUI screen and we created this GUI panel class that's pretty much empty. So in this video what we're going to do is finish this GUI panel class off and create the buttons. So after this video we should start to actually be able to put together some of the, you know, the main menu screen, the leaderboards and whatever. So let's get right into this. The GUI panel is going to have an array list of GUI button of type GUI button called buttons alright import the array list and create a new class in the GUI package called GUI button alright keep that empty for now in the constructor go ahead and do uh, public GUI panel Buns equals new array list of button GUI button. My bad. All right, so we've created this array list of buttons. So this is going to hold all the buttons. Um, these buttons will be updated and rendered. So we're going to use an enhanced for loop. The correct syntax for an enhanced for loop is for GUI button B. Now right here, this B can be whatever you want. This is just the name of the button. Uh, in the array buttons b dot update all right this method doesn't exist yet it will soon now one thing to note about these four loops all right you don't get a counter and the other thing that you should know is that you cannot modify the array list while looping through one of these arrays so if you're using this enhanced for loop you cannot remove things from buttons in the loop you can only do that in a for loop that has a counter all right, so you might get a concurrent modification error or exception by then. So we're just going to continue to do the same thing that render g. And all right, now we need two methods here public void add, and this is going to take in a GUI button. And it, all it's going to do is go buttons.add the button. Same thing with remove. and it's just going to remove the button. All right, for all the mouse events, it's fairly simple. You're just going to take this for loop, this basic for loop, and you're just going to copy it down to these 1 2 3 4. All right, except this is going to be b.mouse pressed e. All right. Copy that and uh, paste it there, paste it there, and there. This is going to be mouse released, mouse dragged, and mouse moved. And this is essentially it for the GUI panel. Now, this GUI panel is pretty simple and it only holds an array list of buttons. If you wanted to um, make this a more advanced class, what you would do is you'd have an array list of a GUI component. All right, this is similar to how J component works in Java. And if you ever done panel dot add or something, like if you were to go into let's let's go to the game class for a second, and you were to just go control space. If you find this method called just add, you see it takes in a component. All right, this component a button extends a component. Same thing, a J button would extend a component, a J panel extends a component, J frame, just about everything in swing extends component, which means that you can add almost anything to a panel. Now, right now we've restricted it so you can only add buttons to this panel. If you were to add like scroll bars and check boxes, then you might want to create a class called GUI component, which buttons extend from and uh, s uh, slide, whatchamacallit, uh, scroll bars extend from any GUI elements would extend from that and you could just loop through them to update and render and do all this other stuff I hope that makes sense to some degree alright now GUI button before we create those methods we need a whole uh, not too many variables 
what we need is a private state current state all right hold on let me just fix this released we're gonna create a private enum called state and in this enum we're just gonna put released hover and pressed I think that's it correct me if I'm wrong um, we need a rectangle called click box this is gonna handle uh, like if your mouse is in the box and you're clicking on it a private array list of action listeners so an action listener is exactly what it does it listens and gets called upon an action event like a click Action listener is a Java class. It is Java auth.event, like that. Um, and we're also going to have a string called text. This is the text that's going to be on the actual button. All right. For this, all right, so this next part, we're going to control the three different states. So, what color is the button when it's released? What color is when it when it's hovered and pressed? I'm just going to be drawing rectangles um, just using graphics 2D. What you could do is go into Photoshop and if you wanted to make a custom button image or whatever, you could. You would have to make the different states. You'd have to make what it looks like when your mouse is hovering over it or if your mouse is pressing down or whatever. Then you'd have to have an array list of buffered images for each one, like hover and released and pressed. But what I'm going to do is create three colors. One is going to be called released. One is going to be called hover. One is going to be called um, press. Import Java dot color. Um, we need a font. Now this font's going to be pretty rigid. We're just going to have a font here that derive font float size is going to be 22f you can change this if you wanted to make bigger buttons or whatever um, if you wanted to have buttons with different font sizes font then you'd have to create a variable which could change so like set font get font or whatever but we're just going to keep this as uh, 22 size we don't need to change it lastly we need a audio handler for the clicking sound effects. All right, import audio handler, com dot fatal cubes dot game dot auto audio handler. All right, now for the constructor. The GUI button is going to take in a couple of positions. It's going to take in an X, a Y, and a width and a height. And all we're going to do is we're going to create a rectangle from those. Um, from those positions. So click box equals new rectangle and just pass an x, y with height. Alright, now all we have to do is initialize the action listeners equals new array list of action listener. We also need to do all the colors. Now I've picked out uh, different colors. Again, because I'm doing all the drawing in the game, the colors are going to be the same throughout all the buttons. And yeah, they're just going to be gray colors. So you can change them if you want. I'm just going to be using RGB values. So color equals new color, main equals new color. My bad, not main. Released equals new color, 173. 177 and 179 light gray hover is going to be a darker gray and that's going to be 150 156 and 158 and press is going to be even darker and that's going to be 111 116 and 117 all right, so once we've enabled these colors here and we have the rectangle set up, the last thing we need to do is get the audio handler. And all we have to do is load up the sound effect call it select.wave and call it select. Now go ahead 
and um, we have this resource folder right here. All we're gonna do is uh, get a sound effect. I have one that I'll just copy and paste in there called select.wave. I don't know if you guys can hear that at all, probably not. But it's just the click. Um, just the clicking. It's similar to click that wave, it's just slightly different. I didn't want to use the same sound effects for those two. So they're slightly different. Alright, so we have that. We need to make a render met I mean an update method, even though there's actually no updating in the button. And what did I do here? It has to be in tight like that. We need a public void. Render graphics 2D G. Standard in most classes. And rendering, all you have to do is check the different states. And so if the current state, current state equals state dot released, then we just set the color to released and g dot fill click box. Else if current state equals state dot hover g dot set color to hover my bad there we go and g dot fill the click box and lastly else so if it's not released and it's not hovering then it's got to be pressed down so we got to set the color to pressed and fill the click box all right so now we've drawn the background for the button depending on which state it's in. All we have to do is set the color back to white. Because now we gotta draw the text. So g dot set fonts to the fonts and draw the string. Draw the string text. The x position is gonna be the click box dot x plus click box dot width divided by two. So we're gonna move half the width over. That's gonna center it. Minus draw utils dot get message width. Message, hold on. Width of text font g divided by two. All right. So that'll center on the x position. Now I'm gonna move this down to a new line just so you guys can see it. Similar to the uh, the y position, x plus y plus click box dot height divided by two. Now this is important to remember. We're going to do plus because Java g dot draw strings draws from the bottom left corner. So we want to find the top left uh, x position. Well, well, the all the way to the left x position, but the bottom y position. So we're going to add half of the height instead of subtracting half the height. So text G divided by two. All right, pretty straightforward. Now we just have a few more things to do. All right, we need a method called add action listener. So this is very similar to a J button in terms of in terms of uh, how action events are done. So you can add an action listener. And that means when the thing, when the button gets clicked, it'll do whatever you put in your action listener. You'll see an example when we create some buttons in the next in future tutorials. So if the click box that contains e dot get point, no, oh, my bad. Look at the wrong thing right now. Instead, we gotta do action listeners dot add listener. All right. So that'll add the listeners. Now we need our four mouse events. So public void mouse pressed mouse events e and import the mouse event the aught mouse event and this is gonna be mouse released mouse dragged and mouse moved in that exact order. Alright, so in mouse pressed we're gonna do if clickbox dot contains you know, 
get points. So we'll get the point of the mouse click. Then the current state equals pressed. All right. If it's released, then we got to check to see if there's a click. So if so if it was released on the button, then for all the action listeners, so action listener in action listeners then all we have to do is al dot action performed no all right so that'll call the action perform method and audio dot play what do we what do we name this select I think that's what I use zero as the loop count and the current state is going to be set to released either way if the if the clicks on the box or not it's going to be set to released all right, for dragged and moved, pretty simple. Dragged, all I have to do is check if the click box that contains the point. If it does, then uh, we're gonna set the current state to pressed. Not depressed, it is gonna just be pressed. Otherwise, if it's not there, then it's gonna be released. All right. In the moved, it's similar to the dragged in terms of if it's whoops. If it's on the point, then we're going to do hover. If it's off the point, we're going to do released. Now, let's just do some getters right now. Just so you can get some stats. Get int uh well public int get x return click box dot x public int get y return click box dot y public int get width and we're going to do the same for get height all right that's just about good there and the last method we need is a pull void set text. So this is to set the text on the button that'll be displayed. Standard setter. All right, that's it for this tutorial. Um, we're pretty much good on our GUI stuff. So we got panels and buttons covered. So if you want, you can go ahead and uh, all you have to do is go into the game, call screen.add. And make sure you have a GUI panel. So go go ahead and create a new class that extends panel and uh, add it. And then in that panel class, all you have to do is create some buttons, add them to the screen, and they should work. Make sure that you call screen.setCurrentPanel, so screen.setCurrentPanel, so that it sets it to the right panel. And so if you want to do that, you can go ahead and you guys could probably figure out how to make the main menu screen at least. It's just got a play button, a leaderboard button, and a quit button with the title and uh, buy fatal cubes or whatever you want to put there. So thank you guys for watching. See you guys in the next tutorial.